From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Ann Ball reporting. With a midnight government shutdown coming closer, both Republicans and Democrats grapple with internal party divisions in hopes of voting on a massive budget measure. Frustrations flared as GOP Senator Rand Paul from Kentucky held up voting in hopes of obtaining a recorded vote to reverse the spending increases. But really, who's to blame? Both parties. We have a 700-page bill that no one has read that was printed at midnight. No one will read this bill. Nothing will be reformed. The waste will continue, and government will keep taking your money irresponsibly and adding to a $20 trillion debt. The Trump administration favors the measure, but an official with the Office of Management and Budget say they are preparing for the lapse in appropriations, even as the voting looks more likely to happen in the early Friday morning hours. Approval in the Senate seemed assured, but the situation in the House remains uncertain. Members of both parties there oppose the measure, which contains roughly $400 billion in new spending. With the launch of the 2018 Olympic uh, Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, South Korea, State Department spokeswoman Heather Nauert is dismissing any concerns that U.S. efforts to counter North Korea's charm offensive could create a rift with South Korea. She said Vice President Pence had a terrific meeting, had terrific meetings with South President South Korean president and the U.S. relationships with both South Korea and Japan are ironclad. This is VOA News. The United States. North Korea staged a military parade in Pyongyang Thursday with one day before the opening ceremonies of the Winter Olympics in rival South Korea. The parade normally held in April, but the Government said it was moving to February in an apparent attempt to draw international attention before it turns to Friday's Olympics uh, opening ceremony in South Korea. Meanwhile, Kim Jong-un's sister will be his eyes and ears in South Korea. She's part of a large delegation from the North to take part in the Winter Olympics. And on the floor of the Stock Exchange in New York, Stocks plunged again Thursday, and for a second time in four days, the Dow Jones Industrial Average sank more than a 1,000 points. The White House is facing questions following the resignation of a key advisor to President Donald Trump. Rob Porter resigned Wednesday after two of his former wives claimed he physically and emotionally abused them. White House spokesman Raj Shaw called the abuse allegations serious. It's important to remember that Rob Porter has repeatedly denied these allegations and done so publicly. That doesn't change how serious and disturbing these allegations are. They're upsetting. And the background check investigates both the allegations and the denials. The investigation does not stop when allegations come to light. It continues to determine the truth. Shaw added that Porter's background investigation was ongoing and that he was operating on an interim security clearance. Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis said the U.S. is not trying to get involved in the years-long Syrian civil war after U.S.-led coalition airstrikes killed about 100 government forces who had attacked coalition-backed Syrian Democratic forces. It was self-defense, Mattis said. Obviously, we are not getting engaged in the Syrian civil war. A Bangladesh court sentenced former Prime Minister Khalida Zia on Thursday to five years in prison on corruption charges. Bangladesh's Anti-Corruption Commission had filed charges against Zia and five others, including her son, for allegedly stealing more than $260,000. From Washington, I'm Ann Ball. That's the latest world news from VOA.